Welcome to Let's Get Real Wednesday. I'm so glad that you to tune in, and we pray that all is well with you and your family. I ask you to continue to pray for our world, and also uh, let's pray for our, our, our families and also our communities that we come from. Uh, right now, it's a very trying time, and our young people need much prayer. So we want to just pray and just ask God that he will protect us all and continue to bless us as well. Join me as we go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before your presence, thanking you, God, for all your many blessings, and we ask you, God, to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from any unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to stand and to be able to pray, and ask you, God, to be with the bereaved family, I ask you, God, to be with those that lost uh, their loved ones and those that are sick in their body as well. Lord, we lift up Pastor Bo to you. We ask you, God, to be with his family. And, Lord, we just ask you, God, to meet their every need. We thank you for this great man of God that have walked with you faithfully. So I'm asking you, God, to continue to bless and uh, meet his family needs during this time. Now, Lord, use my body as a microphone to speak a word from heaven to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, uh, last few weeks, and uh, we've been looking at sowing and talking about the seed. We also looked at the Galatian uh, chapter 6 uh, around that verse and talking about where it says we, we reap what we sow. And I want us to continue to look at that, but I want to look at it out of an, uh, one of the prophets, uh, Haggai. Uh, the book of Haggai is where we're going to Old Testament. Because Haggai says something that uh, when God brought it to his attention, and I think it's something that we need to pay close attention to. Many times, you know, we're just running here and there, and we're doing everything that we want to do. But are we really doing the things that God wants us to do? And many times we're moving so fast that we're not even paying attention that God is trying to get our attention. So what God has to do is that he has a way that he slows us down. And, and he also not only slows us down, but he also can cut things off. So he can speak to us. But even when he's cut things off, he slows us down. Many of us still miss God speaking to you. So I want us to look in Haggai today. And uh, Haggai chapter 1 is where we're going. And it says, starting at verse 3, it says, Then came the words of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your cedar houses? And this house lie in waste. Now, now, basically, God is asking them a question and said, oh, is it time for you to live in your seat of house? You know, in your nice place. But the house of God lies in waste. And the reason that Haggai is writing it because, in fact, God is basically saying, I want to hold them accountable. Do we look at this word accountable. Accountable is basically saying that we have a responsibility, we have an obligation as a believer. And I want to look at this word uh, that God is holding us accountable, even in our stewardship, even in what we're doing today. We see also in uh, that upper verse that it says in uh, Haggai chapter 1, and look at verse 2. Thus spoke the Lord of hosts, saying, The people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord house should be built. Other words, basically what is being said in verse 2, the people is basically saying, hey, this is not a good time. This is not a good time to be worrying about building the Lord's house, you know, adding on to the kingdom. This is not a good time, you know. But God come back and said, but wait a minute. You're saying it's not a good time to do something that I'm asking you to do, but it's a good time for you to do what you want to do. So I want to I wanna use for a subject tonight, uh, let's get real. Let's, let's get real about where we are. I like to use the subject tonight, consider your ways. Consider your ways because uh, God is basically saying, look, I want to counsel with you. I want to talk to you. But it's time for you to consider your ways because of the fact it's amazing that you have time to do everything you want to do. But when God asks you to do something, you know, you don't have time, you know. Uh, you don't want to make time because why? That's not what you want to do. So God said basically that he used Haggai to say, I'll tell you what, I want to get the people's attention. 
And I want the people to consider that ways. I want the people to slow down and think about accountability. Look at this word, accountability. Many times, that's not something that we basically like people to hold us accountable. But accountability is part of the Christian walk. So we see something now that he began to say, look with me in this verse 4. <clears throat> it is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your cedar houses, and this house lie in waste. In other words, you're not worried about God's house. You're only worried about your cedar house, you know, where you live, that your obligation, the things that you want uh, in life. But you're not worried about God's kingdom. So he began to speak, and he said, now in verse 5, Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I want you to look at that word, consider your way. Basically, what he's basically saying to them, and this is a good way to put it. God is basically saying, I want you to pay attention. I want you to do an inventory on yourself. I want many times we're going through life, things happen, and we just overlook the hand of God. We overlook the fact that how God have basically stepped in and cut things off. You know, we, we don't even like to have that conversation because of the fact, only thing in the conversation we really want to have is that being blessed. But many times God can bless us and he come back and have to cut things off because God knows, said it with me, what's the best for you. Now watch this. So he said in verse 6, he said, ye have so much and bring in little. You know, it's sort of like taking your seed. You have so much. In other words, he said, you know, basically when you look at it, he said, you know, you put plenty of seed out there, out there in the ground. Your seed is not the problem, you know, but what you're not paying attention, even though you so much, but you're bringing in very little, and it's time for you to consider why I'm bringing in little. So he began to say something in verse 6. Watch what he said. And bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Hmm. He said, have you paid attention how you can just eat and sin like you? It's not enough. He basically began these contrasts. He said, ye drink, but ye are not filled with the drink. You know, seem like no matter what you're doing, you, you're still not reaching that satisfaction. You don't have satisfaction. Because of one of the reasons that when it's hard to get satisfaction when you're going against God, when you're not doing what God have asked you to do. So Haggai come back and he said, look, consider your ways, you know, consider your ways because God had told the children of Israel that he wanted them to build this temple. And, you know, they started and then they stopped and then they basically said, you know, this is not a good time for us to finish that project. You know, you know how it is sometimes, you know, we, we start going to church, we work in the ministry, and then all of a sudden we stop because something else come up, another obligation come up, or, or maybe something that you want to do. So now the best thing what you do, you put the ministry off to the side. So God said, I tell you what, I want you to consider something because I saw what you did. So God said, basically, I'm going to come back and show you what you have done to yourself. Now watch this. So he says, now, look with me in verse 7. Thus said Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said, consider your ways. Verse 8, he said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build, and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. We're going to come back to verse 8. Because I want you to consider your way. And so to consider your ways, I want you to see something that God is basically saying, apparently you're not conscious of what I've been doing. Apparently you think you have just hit a streak of bad luck. It's not a streak of bad luck. God is basically saying, you know, I'm cutting off some blessing just to get your attention. So I want you to be conscious right now. Many times right now, God wants to bless us. God wants to bless you. But can God bless you and you don't forget about God? Can God give you that promotion? Can God give you that job? Can God put things in your hand and trust you, but you won't forget about God? So we find out that, you know, the Lord said in Matthew 6, 33, he said, First seek ye the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be added unto you. But the problem is we just want the stuff that's added. We don't want to seek the kingdom. 
So he says, consider your ways. But watch this in verse 9. He began to break it down. <clears throat> you look for much, and lo, it came to little. <laughs> and when you brought it home, I did blow on it. He said, when you stop and think about it, it's sort of like the fact that here it is, you got your check, and you know, you had much money. But before you can make it home, God said, I blowed on it. You know, I blowed on it. On your way home, you had a, you know, some, you got a phone call, the icebox went out, the air condition went out, you know, the car broke down. God said, I blowed on it. You need to consider your ways because of the fact you put all this material thing in front of me. So God said, the best thing I can do for you is to blow on it just for you to consider that I'm the one that bless you with these things. Now, how are you going to put me, watch me now, on the back burner? Anybody put God on the back burner? You know, we've been in this COVID thing going on for about two years. How many people have put their ministry on the back burner? How many people have all of a sudden now used COVID for an excuse not to fulfill what God has asked you to do? So we find out that God is basically saying, consider your ways. You so much but you're bringing in very little. You know, look, go with me to Galatians chapter 6 real quick. Galatians chapter 6. Look with me in Galatians chapter 6. And, and let's, let's look at it, verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not marred. For whatsoever a man what soweth, that shall he also reap. So he basically said, whatever you sow, and that's what you're going to reap. You know, and basically many times we fail to realize that, that here it is, we, you know, we call ourselves trying to come up, but really we're pushing ourselves down because we had not considered God's ways. You know, we have not considered our own ways. So this is something that I put down and it said, it goes sort of like this, things that we have not considered. There are some things in life that we have not considered. You had not hit a streak of bad luck. You just need to counsel with yourself and stop and think about some of the things that you need to start considering. Start considering the fact that here it is when God bless you with this job, and all of a sudden now you feel like you have arrived. Now all of a sudden you've gotten away from your ministry. All of a sudden you don't have time to fulfill what God have, have told you to do. So all of a sudden you get a pink slip or they cut back, you know, or layoff. Consider your ways. Sometimes you need to go and just have a talk with God. You need to go and refresh yourself with God. You need to go and, you know, admit to God you made a mistake. So notice what he said. He said, and, and, and I love this because Hagar basically began to say, look, you want to get back in good standing with God? He said, this is, what, this is how you get back in good standing with God. Notice what he said now. And he said in verse 8, Go up to the mountain, bring wood, and build a house. Go do what I told you to do. Go be obedient to what I told you to do. Then he said, and I will take pleasure in it. Look at that. I will take pleasure in it. Let's stop right there. But I want you to see some. Verse 10. Uh, let's finish 9 now. Verse 9. The, the B part of said the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house, that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. You know, only thing you've been worrying about is your own house. But any time now to run back to God's house and see about God's business and take care of God's business, realizing what it really means to to start glorifying God, to be about your father's business. You know, we, we got to understand, you got to consider some things because of the fact, do you know you can stunt your family from moving ahead? Because God said, the only reason I blowed on it because of the fact you're trying to move without me. So watch this, watch this. So he says, go back if you would. Uh, I want to go to John. Matter of fact, let me go to John's gospel. I want to go to John, uh, yeah. Go to John Gospel, and I think it's around that. Um, oh, where I want to go? Yeah. Go with me to John chapter eight. Yeah, John chapter eight, 
And at verse 29, I believe it is. Yeah, verse 29. Watch what Jesus said. And he said, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. Jesus said, you know what? He's with me. The Father's with me. He hasn't left me alone. But the reason he hasn't left me alone because I do the things that please him. Are you doing the things that really please God? Are you living a life that God can really be proud of? Are you really making sacrifice to the glory of God? Are you really giving like God have told you? But the Bible said in Malachi, will a man rob God? Are you robbing God? Or are you being a blessing of God? Watch what John said also. Go to John, if you would. John 17. I want you to see this because it says, Anybody want God to be glorified through you? Do you really, do you want God to be glorified through you? John 17, John 17, 1 through 5 says, These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to anyone as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal, that, that thou might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sinned. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished my work with thine given me to do. I have finished my work that thine have given me to do. You know, have you glorified God? Do you realize God have given you a task? Do you realize God have, have something that he wants you to do? How many of us can really say, Lord, while I'm here on earth, I want to fulfill my purpose that you have called me out to do? I want you to know, each and every believer have a purpose that God is counting, say the word, counting on you to do. God is counting on you to do your part. So God come back and said, consider your way. Have you considered the fact that here it is, you worried about what you want to do and you worry about what everybody else, but you're not worried about what God wants you to do. You need to consider your way because God said, what I have done, I have blowed on everything you're trying to bring home so I can get your attention, so I can bless you. And let me tell you why he want to bless you. Go back to Hey, God, right before I close, <clears throat> I love this part. God said, look, I want to be part of, say the word celebration, <laughs> celebration. God said, look, I want to be a part of the celebration. When I bless you, I want to I take part of that celebration. I want you to be able to give me glory. I want you to be able to tell the world God is blessing me. And I'm so thankful for everything God has done for me. So watch what, watch what God said to Haggai, you tell the people in verse 8, he said, go up to the mountain and bring wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. Look at the word, pleasure in it. God said, look, go build this house, and you know what? As you build it, I want to take pleasure in it. I want to, you know what? I want to be proud of the fact that here is my servant went and, and built this house for me. Then he said, not only take pleasure in it, but watch what else he said. And I will be glorified, said the Lord. He said, I'm going to take pleasure in it. Then I'm going to be glorified. Do you know, God said, you know how it make me feel to be glorified. And here it is that you put me first. Here it is. You have considered the fact that you had a choice, but you chose to put me before you. So let's be real about our worship. Let's be real about our movement while we're here on earth. Let's be real about the fact that God, I want to live a life that pleases you. So we come tonight. We come. We come to challenge you. Sow your seed, but make sure you're trusting God to give the increase. 
sow your seed so that God may be glorified when he bless you. You know, walk in faith. Have that mustard seed faith that God can use you to make a difference. So I want to encourage you. Sow your seed. Because when you sow it, when you sow it on the behalf of God, God can bless your seed to do things that you never thought your seed could ever do. So let's get real about our worship. This is Pastor Walker from Willow Grove Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, challenging you, consider your ways because God wants to use you. Then we ask you also to support us by using Give a Fire, a Cash App, or either just going online and just hitting subscribe. That, that can help us also. And, you know, share, share our ministry. Share the fact about Let's Get Real Wednesday. Don't last long. We just want to challenge you to consider your ways. And then we want to invite you to come and worship with us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We're here to give glory and honor to God. I pray that God may continue to bless you and your family. And God will continue to watch over you. Consider your ways. Thank you for tuning in.